We had a bit of a coffee tragedy this week. My GE Coffeematic 2 coffee maker, stemming from probably the early 70s, um, seems to have a bad um, thermal resistor or thermistor, and uh, either doesn't work or seems to be unsafe for for use at the moment. Which I, I have to say, I'm, I'm mourning this a little bit. However, it has allowed me to visit the basement and see what other drip coffee makers we have uh, down there. And so we're going to look at one of those today. It turns out I had not one, not two, but three of these in the basement. Now, they're all not exactly the same. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, two different styles here. But these are uh, coffee makers made by Philips Norelco in, again, the early 70s and quite possibly are some of my favorite coffee makers. Uh, the one thing that they don't have that the uh, Coffeematic 2 has is this little jobby right here. That is to say, these don't have a switch. You turn them on by plugging them in and you turn them off by unplugging them. Um, I have, actually I have two more bodies in the basement. One is the eight cup model, uh, which I actually like the looks of a little bit better, and another one of these uh, 12 cup models. But you can tell that there's a, a slight difference between the two of these. Um, this one is the later Norelco 12 Dial-A-Brew, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, as opposed to simply the Norelco 12. I prefer the Norelco 12 because uh, it is simpler. And in fact, this is possibly the simplest coffee maker you can buy. Aside from the shape differences in the craft, the dial -a brew has an overly elaborate top, which has always struck me as fairly gimmicky. It allows you to adjust the water flow to dial a brew, which is mm, too cute by half, I suppose. Um, and it just, um, acts to determine how much water goes through this mechanism into the filter basket below it, which is a nearly identical filter basket to the Coffeematic 2 in that it has the um, stem in the middle to allow airflow out. This is something that certainly seems to have gone by the wayside, um, but was apparently relatively common, at least amongst these uh, coffee makers. The simple uh, Norelco 12 has the basket not unlike the Coffeematic 2, again, with the, the stem here. I always put a filter paper in the bottom there, and uh, I have it. Since I have both of these up here, and as far as I know, they are nearly identical on their insides, I thought it might be a fun thing to do uh, <laughs> to run six cups of water through both of them uh, and see you know who comes out the winner. I'm only going to use the Norelco 12 uh, to make coffee today and uh, that's what I've been using for you know most of this week since the the Coffeematic 2 um, stopped functioning in the way that I want it but you know just to make things exciting let's see who's going to win the newer Norelco 12 dial brew or the older Norelco 12? Both coffee makers work in the same way. You flip up this top on both of them, which kindly reminds you, one in white and one in just plastic, that if you're using it every day, you really need to clean it fairly often. Um, I tend to use a 50-50 solution of vinegar, white vinegar and water. Um, Although that's not what I'm going to be doing now. I'm making coffee now. After only about 10 seconds, the, oh, the Norelco 12 dial -a brew uh, starts heating water up a little bit faster than its predecessor. Uh, both of them had water heating within 15 seconds, so still fairly good. And 
let's just see how hot the water is in the filter basket. And as you can see, the water temperature exceeds 200 degrees. Um, part of me wonders if this means I should calibrate my thermometer because it seems to be essentially boiling. Um, it's possible that this is too hot and uh, that, that might end up scorching the beans, but um, it definitely gets the water hot. You can tell these are older machines. They probably have a lot of stuff built up in them. Uh, they lose a lot of steam. Um, but again, part of that's probably because the water's nearly boiling when it comes out. And pretty much simultaneously, at about five and a half minutes, both of the lights came on. It's interesting, and I, I don't know why they would have done this. The uh, 12 cup coffee maker has a flat light uh, that you can see here and the dial -a brew has a protruding light. Um, I'd be curious to know what caused that, that design change. I just noticed one nice feature about the dial -a brew basket. It has this handle, which means you can lift it without, you know, just delicately grabbing around the top um, because you have to take it off when you're pouring your coffee. Rather jokingly, I've referred to this as the majestic Norelco 12. And I have to say, I do love the style. I think the eight cup version is um, just a little bit more aesthetically appealing. Uh, definitely the Norelco 12, as opposed to the dial -a brew has much better lines to the, the craft. And it really does a great job making coffee. Um, if you can find one of these, I would certainly pick it up. Chances are good. If I find another at a thrift store, I'm going to buy it, even though I do have three of these, uh, three bodies, two crafts, um, and an eight cup body. I, I seem to have broken a couple of crafts along the way, and I may have to pick up a craft to go with it. Um, if you want to, you know, Go ahead and buy one off of eBay. They tend to be going for about $75. So um, it's cheaper than they were new, but it is still a fairly um, expensive way to pick up one. They show up at places. Um, obviously, I haven't been spending that much money on them, um, but I haven't seen any in quite a while either. So, um, you know, keep your eye out for one because it, it makes a great cup of coffee. And the fact that it heats the water to 200 plus degrees means you can slide a Chemex under it and uh, just go about your day.